In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Uh, dear friends, this message is uh, addressed from Bethlehem to all Christian speaking, all English speaking Christians. I have just made a mistake in Iraq when you speak Aramaic or dialectal Oriental Aramaic called Suras, they say that you speak Christian. It can be Messiah. So I'm going to speak Christian in English. So this message is first addressed to the Christians in the UK. Holy Christmas, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. I would like to address my own uncle, Uncle Anthony, to God bless him and his family. Uh, he is already a British citizen since at least five decades. Because uh, why is this message coming directly from Bethlehem and at the eve of Christmas? Because we read in the news that something like four million Christians left Christianity in Great Britain, so it seems. Of course, this does not talk about people who embraced Christ, who became Christians in the UK and in other English-speaking countries. Nevertheless, let me as a Roman Catholic priest, but of course a Christian priest, tell you how wonderful Christ is. And that it's worthwhile being Christians. It's wonderful to read in the New Testament, and actually only in the New Testament, that God is love. We do have a definition, so to say, because God can never be defined, a definition of God in the book of Exodus, chapter 3, verses 13 and following. I am who I am. Ehye asher ehye. God is the being. God is the source of the being. But the secret of God the secret of God's being in Himself and outside Himself, the secret of Him creating the world and especially humankind is love. Sometimes, by the way, this year has been declared since the beginning of last October, the year of faith by His Holiness Pope Benedict XVI. And it comes actually one week or so before the Synod for the new evangelization. New evangelization does not mean to preach a new gospel, because as St. Paul rules it out at the beginning of his first of his letter to the Galatians, there is not such a thing as a, another gospel. But we have to preach the gospel anew, the good news, the good news of salvation, the good news that all human beings are sisters and brothers, the good news of equality between man and woman in Christian marriage, the good news of equality of all, without any slavery anymore, since Christianity has uh, liberated the world from slavery. This is a historic fact. So, my dear friends, what I would like to suggest here, that if you feel any criticism or any doubt, think of Cardinal Newman, John Henry Newman, who became a Catholic and then a Cardinal. He said, let me remember, 
A thousand difficulties do not produce in me one single doubt. Because we, we believe in God. We believe in God, His Word and His Spirit. This is what we call the Holy Trinity. Not three gods, but God, His Word, John 1.1, 1, 1, and His Spirit. Because actually in Hebrew, Ruach HaKodesh, and in Aramaic, Ruach HaDib Qudsha, is the Spirit of the Holiness, the Holiness being God Himself. At times we, we hear some criticism against the Church, or against the Churches. And here again, let me quote either Newman or Chesterton. Gilbert K. Chesterton, who say that, and who write, rightly, that when you read, when you know the church history, then you stick to the, what we call the traditional church. The church which Jesus founded in the year 30 AD, on the rock. Dear friends, let me advise you a couple of books. A book by, written already in the 50s of last century by Canon Francis Ripley. Francis Ripley. The title is This is the Faith. This is the Faith. Actually, it's a, it's a biblical presentation of the Catholic and the Orthodox Christian faith. How about other problems? Well, for other problems, especially about religions coming from the East, well, please consult Christians, Eastern Christians, who live in the UK and, and in the other English-speaking countries, because they know more about religions which were born in the East in their own countries. For example, when you hear that the Bible has been falsified, this is not true. About the New Testament, well, you may look it up at Google, by the way, manuscripts of the New Testament, you find not less than 5,000 manuscripts. The variance among the different readings of the New Testament texts are less than 2%, which means that 98% of the text of the New Testament is solid and well attested to without any small variant. Can you remember that, please? 98%. 98%. This percentage is not reached by any other book or series of books in the antiquity. Well, <clears throat> I, am, I am relying on the Lord's grace in this year of faith. How about atheism? How about people who deny God's existence? Well, of course, we are not to solve this. We are not going to solve this problem in a couple of minutes. But what does their life mean? Does their life have any meaning whatsoever without God and without the hereafter? What hope do they have? What future? Do they have? What reason do they have actually? What explanation do they have for this world? What explanation do they have for our minds, our consciences, and the love which is in our hearts, which know not any uh, material being can give? Well, dear friends, I would like also to, 
to, um, to criticize so-called Christians who take away symbols of Christmas out of respect, so they claim, for the others. Well, if they want to take away the Christian symbols, of the Christmas symbols, out of respect for the Muslim world, well, let them remember that Muslims also venerate Christ and his mother, and that the Quranic texts venerate and talk about Maryam, the mother of Isa, and about the nativity, I mean the birth of Isa, the virgin birth of Isa, son of Maryam. This is by no means a publicity for Islam, but this is a criticism towards so-called Christians who, out of goodwill but ignorance, are keen or would be keen on eliminating Christmas tree, the Christmas uh, grotto, the Christmas greetings, Christmas wishings, Christmas wishes, out of respect for Muslims. Thank you, dear friends, for your attention. And again, not just a Merry Christmas, but a Holy Christmas commemorating Christ's birth, this unique birth in history. Unique, because it has divided history into two, whether we like it or not, whether some people like it or not. Before Christ, after Christ. Today we are 2012, after Christ. Whether we like it or not. It's not being fanatic when we say, that Christ's birth divided history into two. It's not being fanatic, saying that before Jesus was born, people were either Jews, thinking that God was only their father, and pagans, who had a multitude of divinities. So let us not return to paganism, and let us tell Judaism that we agree with it and with Islam that we worship only one God, His Word and His Spirit. And if one needs more information and more explanation, when there are plenty of wonderful uh, Catholic and Anglican books, uh, let alone also the Orthodox Greek Orthodox books, also in English, explaining the essential of our faith. God bless you all. Thank you.